Imagine a figure who has been loved and worshipped by hundreds of millions of people in many countries for untold generations. A personality upon whom countless kings have modelled themselves. A story which has been central to the culture of many countries, cutting across a spectrum of religions. An epic which has shaped the lives and daily behavior of millions and provided them an ethical framework on which to build their understanding of their duties in the world. We are speaking of the Ramayana, one of the great stories of the world. The story is fascinating and very simple. It centers on Rama, the prince of Ayodhya in India. He's exiled by his father and sent to the forest for 14 years. His faithful wife Sita and his loyal brother Lakshmana follow him to the forest where they live. Sita is tricked and abducted by the powerful and evil King Ravana. He takes her off to Lanka and keeps her in captivity there. Rama searches for her and becomes friends with the powerful monkey leader, Hanuman. Ravana is killed and Sita is brought back. That is the essential outline of the story. Every character in the Ramayana is a role model. So these are role models whom we can ask our children to model themselves on. And I think that is what is a very important aspect of the Ramayana and that's what makes it eternal. Being in Asia, we all have inside ourselves Mahabharata and Ramayana. And so these are two fundamental uh, epics uh, for the Asian culture in general. The Ramayana story has gone all over Southeast Asia as well as South Asia. The stories are very, very well known and have been for a thousand years or more. So the characters and their situations and their uh, personalities are well enough known that they can be used as a positive or a, a negative role model and people understand. We saw it as the most extraordinarily widespread and influential text uh, in Asian literature and religious culture. When I give talks to Western audiences, I refer to the Ramayana as the greatest story never told in the West. The great majority of the human race has lived in Asia, not in Europe or the other continents. So it's obvious that this has been the most performed and the most uh, impactful in terms of poetic, spiritual stories, what are called legend or mythology today. The extraordinary thing about the Ramayana is uh, how many versions of it there are. 
in every Indian language, we have uh, Ramayans. Of course, the original Ramayan is written by the great sage Valmiki, the Adi Kavi, the first great poet of India. The Ramayan spread far beyond the borders of India to all the countries of Asia in the first millennium CE. It continues as a shared culture in South and Southeast Asia till today. This film provides some glimpses of Ramayan performances across South and Southeast Asia. The focus is on four of the principal characters who continue to fascinate people till today. Rama, his beloved wife Sita, the great monkey warrior Hanuman, and Ravan, the arrogant and ruthless king who abducts Sita. These are characters who dominate the imagination of vast populations. My own first memory is to, to go and watch the performance uh, in the open air uh, place, you know, uh, and because I, I was so small, they put me up behind uh, Ravana. <laughs> and, and I still remember how Ravana sweat in the hot weather while he was uh, dancing. Like even before elementary school, in, in the Thai language subjects, we, we would study Ramakian again and again, year by year, in, in the different parts of the stories. If, if you're Thai and if, you're, if you're, you have enrolled in the, in the educational system, you must have read Ramakian for, for how Thai people think about, think about, yeah, what's good, what's bad in terms of political, in terms of moral, when you, when you face some kind of situation which is kind of similar to what we have studied from Ramakian. Yes, N now I am uh, 72 years old already. But I know about the story when I was five years at, at the primary school in Luang Prabang. The character of Param is very important for the Lao people. Everybody, uh, Indonesian people, know about Ramayana story. Actually, especially in uh, Java and Bali. But uh, everybody knows about Ramayana story. The Ramayana story tell about uh, love and uh, peaceful in the world. Now in schools and even in university and now in general public, there's a lot of awareness about Ramayana and there are Ramayana debates and Ramayana festivals. We have plenty of Hanuman devotees and uh, also Hanuman temples are plenty here. Ramayana has been part and parcel of Nepali cultural life. It has a religious dimension, obviously. More than that, Ramayana has been in Nepalese society since time immemorial. Apaman, ghor apaman. Lanka pati ko ghor apaman. Even in uh, folklore, 
folk tales and folk songs. They have stories from Ramayana. <laughs> it is very hard for me to re recall the exact juncture of, juncture of time when I heard about uh, Ramayana and Ram because I belong to traditional Brahmin family. So, uh, from the very beginning, uh, Ram, Sita and all these Hindu deities, uh, these are part and parcel of our life. Maybe two, three years old, from, from that on. I can remember my father reciting Ramayana, both Nepali version as well as Sanskrit version. <laughs> was born in Janakpur. So, today also, Nepali women imitate her character. So, uh, in that way, Sita still represents a daughter in perfection, a mother in perfection, a queen in perfection, and knowledgeable person in perfection. And from the Nepal's point of view, she is someone who is always with us. The first, first memory was my grandmother narrating the Rimke. And this epic written 2,000 years ago in India, I mean, is still going strong in all Asia. In Cambodia, everyone knows it. They all know Rama, Sita, Lakshmana, and Anuman is the superstar of Cambodia anyway. In uh, Southeast Asia, certainly in the Buddhist countries of Southeast Asia, Cambodia and Thailand, Rama is seen as an ideal uh, king. And so kings have, in Southeast Asia, have always, and in India too, of course, sought to model themselves on uh, Rama. They've used the name Rama sometimes. And there's all kinds of symbolism and royal ceremonies and so on that are um, trying to associate the king with Rama, Rama being the ideal king of Dharma, of righteous uh, behavior. This is a Buddhist our country. And yet the kings of the Thailand took the name of Rama. You see their kings are Rama one, Rama two, Rama three, and so on. And they named their capital Ayutthaya, which is of course the Thai pronunciation of Ayudhya, which is the Rama's capital. And even further into the archipelago, which are Islamic states, you find uh, texts like the Hikayat uh, Sri Rama, where Rama is turned into an idealized uh, Islamic ruler and so on and so forth. So you can see how the, the story, the characters can transcend even uh, religious divides. It is obvious that uh, the Siamese, since antiquity, embraced the Ramayana as the model of virtuous king. Uh, Siamese king has two terms. Uh, calling the names, including Dhammaraja, the king with great virtues, and Ramatibadi, the lords in the name of Rama. So the kings consider themselves as a descendants or the reincarnation of Rama. It's a long time belief that uh, the king should be the avatar of Vishnu as he is a protector god. So sometimes he may come to the earth and help people and try to save people from dangers. So that's why uh, for a long time ago, many people still believe to, uh, to the king as a, a Vishnu god. 
the ethics of ideal king can be found in the Ramayana, in the Ramakian. And uh, the king is not an absolute person who would follow his own inclination. He listened to the people. He uh, uh, is concerned with the welfare of the people and so on. And even in India, Mahatma Gandhi spoke of Ram Raja as the model for modern India. Gandhiji was a great devotee of the Ramayana. Uh, he quoted it often and referred to it many times. Ram Raja, exactly. Uh, called this uh, long period of ideal uh, conditions um, where the, uh, the great king, the great leader has provided the, um, the, the basis and the foundation and the structure uh, for society and also provided a, a model of, of behavior so that there's prosperity, there's good health, there's uh, good education, there's happiness for everyone. This idea of the Ram Raja has always, for centuries and centuries, been an ideal to, uh, to strive for. We have inscriptions in uh, Thailand, several Sanskrit inscriptions, in which one of the kings says that I want to rule this country as Rama ruled Ayodhya in ancient times. The Ramayana is the most popular story told to little children by grandparents. Puppets and shadow puppets have been used to tell this tale. Some of the finest paintings, sculptures and reliefs across Asia have been based upon the Ramayana. There's a 9th century temple in uh, central Java that has very extensive stone reliefs of the Ramayana story. So already by a thousand years ago in Indonesia, the Ramayana was so important um, that it was being represented at a, a scale and um, with uh, artistic um, attention and creativity to rival what was going on in, uh, in India itself at the time. The 12th century Angkor Wat temple of Cambodia has 1,200 square meters of bar relief. This has the most extensive depiction of the Ramayan theme anywhere in the world. One of the most beautiful depictions of Ramayana in paintings is found in the palace, royal palace at Bangkok in Thailand. And these paintings are superb, uh, painted in gold. The complete story of Rama is uh, depicted. Well, I think it uh, it speaks to and serves as an example of a certain kind of uh, social culture that is foregrounded throughout the region. That is, uh, a, a kind of systems of truthfulness, ethical behavior, uh, devotion to duty, and deference to figures of authority, particularly one's parents, to uh, one's guru, to the priestly class, and so on and so forth. So each of the central characters in the Rama story stands as a kind of uh, shining example of how people either should or should not 
behave in this world. Rama is the ideal prince, adhering to dharma, truth and righteousness, who gives up everything to maintain the truth of his father's word. Satyam, truth, becomes a very central uh, ethical principle. Rama is forced to abandon uh, the throne, his wealth, power, everything, and go to live as a mendicant, uh, homeless, penniless beggar in the wilderness for 14 long years. There is a constant discourse on the ethics of everything. For example, when Kaikeyi says Rama should go to the forest for 14 years and my son should become king, Rama doesn't just say, okay, I'm going bye-bye and doesn't go off. He comes to his rooms and there is a discussion. His brother Lakshmana says, no, stay here. Then Rama and Lakshmana discuss it, you know. And Rama says, no, I must go. Because my father has given his word to Kaikeyi. And as a son, as a good son, I have to make sure that my father's words are upheld. I think the ethics part is very important. That's what makes a story immortal. Rama serves as a kind of idealized version of a kind of masculinity that is powerful, truthful, a great warrior, but also a, a vessel of compassion. So a person in command, not only of a nation, of a region, of a state, but in command of himself. Ram is an uh, example of our living today. So I think uh, it's, it's kind of a knowledge we give the kids uh, that what kind of life you should lead, a Ram kind of life. Sita, his wife, the heroine of the story, although she suffers terribly through the story, is also held up as an example of the perfect wife, the Pativrata, who follows her husband into penury, hardship, and so on, even though she doesn't have to. He tries to get her to stay at home, she argues against it. Valmiki describes Ravana as this kind of grand, almost glorious, imperial lord. And when Hanuman first sees him while, while searching the palace, he describes him in great detail with wonder and amazement. And he said, what beauty, what majesty, what grandeur. Ravan is that misappropriation of divine virtue that needs to be overcome. It does lead to arrogance and wrong action. However, it's not just a simple matter of a good guy versus a bad guy or a god versus a demon. Hanuman is, of course, the most interesting, daring, provocative, uh, enchanting, attention-commanding figure in the entire Ramayana. Hanuman's devotion to Rama becomes an exemplary act of devotion to God. But a very, very popular figure, and in fact, probably the most widely worshipped divinity in, in India today. The ancient story of the Ramayana continues till today across South and Southeast Asia as the most popular story of the people. It is found in comic books and in the most watched TV serials of the region. This is one of the greatest works of human 
culture, and I'm stressing human because it's not something restricted just to one group, country, region, or ethnicity. From what we witness at UNESCO, we know that Ramayana has a world significance. I mean, of course it's coming from India, but it has irrigated all Asia.